What's up everybody, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. It's time to adjust our tier list towards what right seems right to buff or nerf this time. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be making sure that your lower elo adventures will be joyful with the best possible champions right at your disposal. Don't forget that we focus on simple to play, high margins of error within gameplay that doesn't end your game on the spot, and highly impactful champions. Many of the more nuanced update towards itemization or changes is something that mainly impacts a higher elo tier list, so don't be too confused about placements in this list, Anyway, let's jump right into it. First, we'll be taking a look at the top lane tier list, take some time, and try to spot your main. With Orn being as strong as he is, we need to present you with at least an option to perform well into him, and here we have Zac. This blob is a very powerful laner when it comes to tanks and sustains amazingly well into Orn. Next to this, he can also abuse that one thing that most low elo players don't think about, super high engage ranges without any indicator about what's going to happen. Orn, on the other hand, is going to tell you exactly what's going to be going on by blowing into his Orn. But Zac just stretches his biceps a little bit and jumps right onto your forehead. Using items such as Radiant Virtue provides him with all the stats that he wants, and especially thanks to the more recent change to this item, it's super cheap for him to acquire. This obviously leads to an earlier spike, and as long as Zack is allowed to sustain through fights, he'll deal with that tanky Orn without any issue. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right. Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Another all-time classic that's been demonizing the top lane and is very strong in the sense of having impact all the time is Maokai. This tree can provide you with anything that you need from a supportive angle or just take over the game if fed and itemized well. On top of that, he'll even be useful from behind, given the amount of crowd control that he offers while simultaneously allowing his allies to play around him. Easy setup, easy lockdown, and super high dive potential if you feel up to the task. As for the item department, just put Sunfire and Even Shroud into your pocket and things will naturally go your way. For the jungle world, we also have some adjustments that are interesting to observe. Changes within this list aren't as extreme as they might be for the higher elo list, but we have some clear winners, so take a look. First up, we go with Ivern. This champion's supportive power and ability to take over games from the get-go is unparalleled thanks to the items available in the game. Echo's Aphilia is a perfect fit, and with support items being as cheap as they are, he can stack them up and reap all their benefits. Add to the fact that most people in the lower brackets don't acknowledge spam ganking at all and therefore fall victim to this vicious tree over and over again, well, he might be the pick for you. Taking into account that you'll be going for Echoes of Hylia and Arden or Staff depending on the champs that you're with makes it incredibly painful for the enemy to play into your champion once you're slightly ahead. Speaking of ahead, the next champion is all about doing that, so it naturally feels a little bit weird to put her into the lower elo tier list. Kindred has to play around certain mark spawns and utilize pattern recognition to make sure that she's efficient in terms of picking up marks. However, with the new introduction of a build, things have changed. Kindred now turns into a mobile turret, being as chunky as a tank, yet dishing out unholy amounts of damage. You might ask, how did that happen? Well, it's Trinity Force into Black Cleaver or Wit's End. Try dying with that. Alright, with the jungle wrapped up, let's move over to the mid lane roll, and this is our list for the current patch. Go ahead and try to spot your main. If you had trouble spotting your main, then you're up for the perfect trick. The following champion might just turn it into your main or minion or ward at any point in any time. Any idea who I'm talking about? Well, it's Nico, and this champion has hit the rift way harder than we expected. Even more powerful is the fact that people who are not constantly paying attention to her existence will be caught off guard all the time. I mean, normally you'd know that blue buff doesn't really appear in your lane, right? Well then again, you might be confused, and this split second is enough for her to cast her ultimate, which you can't see by the way. And if you want to utilize her power in a mage-like approach, all you have to do is buy the following items. Get Proto Belt, Sork Shoes, and Shadow Flame. Winning has never been this easy. If this champion isn't exactly what you feel is right for you, then we suggest another one that's quite well versed in managing time. Historically, Zillian has been one of the most annoying picks to face, which usually features only one glaring weakness, his laning face. Given that you have an accelerated lost chapter in combination with Features Market and the minor gold buff to mid lane makes you stronger than before. Adding even more power to that is a common perception of players in said elo bracket. The concept of your champion literally single-handedly denying the enemy engage while also providing safety and crowd control alike is often forgotten due to one simple thing, the enemy's bloodthirstiness over chasing kills and seeing low HP bars. To make sure that you're also in the best position possible, you gotta also check out his typical core build consisting of Everfrost, Boots of Lucidity, and Cosmic Drive. Nonetheless, don't forget to sit on a tear as you need it later on for Archangels. Another thing that's nice to sit on is some RP. Did you know that you can win more than 11,000 RP every patch? And trust me, there's a lot 
lot of league patches. Just check out the link in the description below, sign up for the pro plan, and paste your username in the comment section below. Alright, now it's time for some spice in the ADC role, and here we've picked on the newest theme for the entire class of marksmen. Trinity Force. But first, go ahead and check out the rankings. Thunder Champion? Perfect. Then let's check out our first highlight of the patch. Here we have a sewer rat for you, and Twitch is rocking the game as we speak. Speaking of Twitch, if you ever want to catch me live, it's twitch.tv slash Nathan underscore ING. Yeah, and a little shameless self-plug right there. Anyway, he's easy to play from a skill floor perspective, but features a reasonably high skill ceiling. Before you start laughing, it's not about the mechanical execution, but more about the approaches that you can take with Twitch. Being able to read the map and going for clutch rotation utilizing your stealth while knowing the enemy wards is an elaborate strat which you won't see often in lower brackets. However, with the following items, you'll basically turn into a tank that features high DPS as he completes the build. For now, we'll only provide you with the core build and leave the rest up to you. Start with Blade of the Rune King to have a strong first item and then transition into Trinity Force. This build will provide you with high damage and broken stance which will make it very difficult for the enemy team to kill you. The same chain of thought comes into play when we talk about the next champion, but here we have two approaches. Miss Fortune was a brutal winner of the lethality changes to Yumu's in the past, however she got a bit sad when it got nerfed. Fundamentally speaking, it's still a really good item for her in the right moments, but for this patch we got something new. Trinity Force Misfortune. Rather than going Yumu's into Collector, you'll go for Trinity Force into Kraken or TF into Collector. With these items in your inventory, you'll actually be surprised how much damage you deal. Go give it a shot and let me know how it went. Okay guys, no more talks about Trinity Force. Unless... <laughs> no, just kidding. Let's talk about supports and as per usual, let's take a look at our rankings first. Nautilus is a great fan of the recent changes to the price tags and rose even more and more in priority, and the same applies to Rel. Both of these champions are really happy right now and display that they are quite powerful and that is especially true for Rel. Luckily for you, both of them feature the same itemization or at least can dip into the same vein. Even Shroud and Zeke's Convergence or even Shroud and Knight's Vow are amazing pickups for either of them, so you'll be more than happy to get these. For all the Enchanter players, we gotta mention the most busted picks for this patch and it's gonna be about Janna and Sona once again. These two are absolute criminals with Echoes of Hylia and make the game just borderline unplayable for enemies once they've scaled. Now let's be honest here, how many times have you seen these champions get shut down as they should be. I mean, at least Sona should die reasonably well, right? Well, if that's not the case, though, it's time for them to take over the map. Echoes of Hylia, Staff for Arden, depending on the team comp that you have, and your life will be wonderful. Last but certainly not least, we want to highlight the walking brain for the support role. Heimerdinger is an infamous criminal when it comes to camping and brushes with this little array of turrets and, let's be real, name a more iconic duo than league players and face checking unwarded bushes. I'm waiting. For him to be fully functional, it's pretty easy. Just pick up Realize and Leandris and you're good to go in terms of utility and damage alike. Alternatively, you can even default to the usual champ for pressure. It's Annie. Annie and Annie again. Maybe one day the champion will be weak in the support role again, but <laughs> who's to tell when that's going to happen? For Annie, however, there's also the Echoes of Hylia build. Just run Font of Life, rush Echoes of Hylia, and then go for Realize afterwards. Enjoy a nice power curve from a decent early game to an absolute deadly mid game. And that wraps up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see y'all in the next one and you know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.